Thank you, Mauricio. <clears throat> Our next speaker, Caroline Reese, will say a few words about John Ruggie's mandate as UN Special Representative on Business and Human Rights. Caroline is an advisor to John Ruggie and directs the, government, the Governance and Accountability Program at the Corporate Social Responsibility Initiative of Harvard Kennedy School. Caroline previously spent 14 years with the British Foreign and Commonwealth Office. From 2003 to 2006, she led the UK's human rights negotiating team at the United Nations and chaired the UN negotiations on business and human rights. Please join me in welcoming Caroline Reese. Thanks very much indeed, uh, Chris. Well, I, I know I stand between uh, you and uh, the rest of the program and the, and the star turn of the evening. So I'll literally just take a couple of minutes, really, to, to, to recall for us all the context in which John's mandate was created, because I think it's not insignificant as, reflect, as we reflect on everything that he's done and, and, and achieved over the last five and a half years. Uh, in 2004, I, I was representing the UK government in human rights negotiations in the UN in Geneva. The Commission on Human Rights, as it then was, the Human Rights Council today, of course, had achieved actually a good number of successes for human rights, often unsung, uh, over the years and decades of its operation. But it was and it remains uh, typically the contentious issues that get into the headlines uh, and the attention of the international community. And this reflects the body's equal and opposite ability to take a difficult but important subject and turn it into a political football, using it to open up ideological debates that often have too little relevance to the subject in hand, for political point scoring, to open up divisions between northern and southern delegations, eastern and western. Many perfectly legitimate issues had gone this way, being kicked around uh, the Geneva Arena once a year with uh, little or no practical relevance to human rights and human lives on the ground. Unfortunately, when the issue of business and human rights first arrived uh, in the Commission in 2004 uh, in the form of a set of draft norms, uh, whatever the merits of the document, it was set from the start on that all too familiar and doomed track. Uh, business and civil society lobbyists were already digging trenches. Some governments were preparing for the kind of political games I just described. Others were trying to get rid of the subject to avoid that scenario. And yet others were frankly bemused by the um, rhetoric that was flying around the corridors. Uh, the UK government saw not only the problems of the draft norms, but also the critical importance of the issues that it raised, that the document uh, and debate raised. And so we sought to put the discussion onto a more promising track. We worked from the start with different stakeholder groups to arrive at the idea of a special representative of the Secretary General who could clarify the issues and actually move the debate forward. And we then partnered with a range of states from different regions, Argentina, India, Nigeria, and Russia, to take forward a resolution asking the then Secretary General Kofi Annan to uh, create such a position. That was in 2005, and of course, he uh, invited uh, John Ruggie to take up that post. Since then, Norway has taken up the baton from the UK, and working with the same group of companies has uh, advanced the discussion in the UN context in, a, in, a, in an inspired and very far-sighted manner. So all of this to say that today it's actually strangely hard to recall uh, where this all actually started. Little did we imagine at the time that the landscape of the debate could change uh, in the way it has in the time that it has. Propositions that were then hotly contended are now, frankly, taken for granted. Issues that were untouchable can now be reasonably debated. And discussions have moved from the realm of theoretical contestation to become exercises in practical implementation and real progress. We'll hear from John, of course, about his journey as the SRSG, uh, the path he chose to follow, uh, where he's brought us today, and the opportunities uh, that lie ahead. But as we do so, uh, I guess we shouldn't forget just how far this has brought us already in less than six years. That this subject, business and human rights, should, in June of this year, become, come to be counted as one of the successes of the Human Rights Council is actually no mean feat at all. So with those thoughts and that reminder of where we've come from, Chris, I'll hand back to you and onwards into our program. Thank you. Mm -hmm.